And thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Dr. Jaretta Carey, welcoming you all aboard as we move full steam ahead. My guest for today is a veteran educator with over 19 years experience in the field of education. She holds a master's degree in nonprofit organization and a bachelor's degree in primary education. Currently, she serves as the principal of Freeport Gospel Chapel School here on Grand Bahama Island. Please welcome Mrs. Marlene Hope. Well, greetings, Mrs. Carey, and how are you? I am doing wonderful. I am so glad to have you on the show today. I know there is much going on, especially as it relates to the learning processes and getting those systems together for students. So I really appreciate you taking this valuable time to come and join me here on Full Steam Ahead today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm equally excited to be here. Awesome. So tell me, Principal Knowles, I know that you have not served in the capacity as principal that long but your leadership skills have definitely been put to the test. You know, you've encountered Hurricane Dorian and now everything that's going on with the coronavirus pandemic. So what are some of the first plans of action that you had to put in place to still meet the needs of your school and the students? Well, the first thing I had to do was I had to lead from a human resources perspective and I had to make sure before we even get into the heart of the matter that everyone was okay um, on a personal level we all went through Dorian we all went through COVID and so the first um, line of defense for me was finding out what is your mental health what is your check what is your status and then we get into the heart of the matter um, with COVID what we had to do was we had to decide how are we going to take this 100% face-to-face school and turn it into a 100% remote learning organization overnight? And so we were just like everybody else, you know, on March the 15th, that Sunday evening, we all found out together that that was going to be no face-to-face instruction um, the next day. And so we had to figure it out, and we did. Awesome. So how instrumental was your entire team in terms of other administrators and teachers coming together to meet that challenge? The professional learning community, and I want to say that collaboration is the word of the day in education. And so immediately a professional learning community was formed. We got together, decided what would be the best practices for us. And out of that conversation, we got the Zoom for live teaching instruction. From that, we also got using the YouTube videos that would connect with the the content that we were presenting for reinforcement. Um, From that, we got placing all of our live teaching and YouTube video links on the Google Classroom so that students and parents can go back and look at it at their leisure in their time. Because the reality of the internet connectivity on the island was a bit shaky because of the effects of Hurricane Dorian and the island still being in a rebuilding phase. We also got the idea of using the IXL learning platform. And so we just focused on the math and the language areas. And we use the IXL to go along again with our curriculum. And the teachers just use the data to assist with driving the instruction. And so again, we got together 
in our computer lab, we put our heads together and we came up with what would be the most suitable products uh, for, to take our students and chart them through these uncharted waters, you know, during such an unprecedented time, not only within the Grand Bahama community, but within the global community. Awesome. I really love how you explained that it took a collaborative effort, you know, and everybody came up with their various ideas and you were able to forge forward and still meet your objectives, you know, which is to provide that quality education to your student community. Awesome. And so Principal Knowles, once those ideas were brought to light, how easy was it to actually implement that system? You know something, I think anything will work if you just work it. Because we sat together and we trained each other, we got in the room and those who knew what to do stood up in the front of the room and used their skills and expertise to train everybody. And so we stick together as a family here uh, at Freeport Gospel Chapel, Chapel School. And so because one person knew what to do, they held everybody's hand. And so everybody who brought an idea to the table, we held each other's hand and walked with each other to make sure that everybody looked prosperous and was successful at the end of the day. Great, I love it. And so we can definitely see that in terms of delivering that education, I know you said that you focus on mostly your core subjects. So that is definitely taken care of. But of course, you know, especially the graduating class, you know, they've worked so hard throughout their entire primary school careers and they're looking forward to that moment of celebration, getting to walk across the stage. You know, what are some of the ways that you were able to maintain that school spirit and also have celebratory moments? Listen, again, I have to give it up to the team. I have the best team on Grand Bahama and I can brag. I can brag about them. Again, we had a graduation committee and we got together and we collaborated and we decided what would be the best to come up with for our students. And so we had a two part graduation, almost like a blended approach. The first part of our graduation ceremony was done virtually. Um, it, we brought students in to our multi-purpose center. Certain portions of it was recorded live with a few students, we social distance, we wore masks, went the whole nine yards, and some parts of it was done um, just as online virtually. The whole package was put together and a YouTube um, video link that I can share with you, of course. And we went ahead and we had a virtual part. And so that was streamed live. All of the parents were on the students were on um we scheduled it and then we streamed it after that part was done we had a face-to-face -face. we had a live and so we had a drive through and so we had the balloons and we had the music and the students came in with their cars to collect now the trophies and the certificates and their commencement diploma in order to move on to their next level they were able to wave goodbye to their family and friends here at Free Park Gospel, see their colleagues' faces, some of them for the last time until you know they see them again in the high school. And so for us, again, it was a two-part ceremony and that came about through collaboration. There was virtual as well as there was a drive-through. And so, you know, like I said, anything will work if you work it. It's just a matter of us sitting down and discussing how we would go about doing it, but we pulled it off. Awesome, and I'm sure that they were extremely pleased mm -hmm. and excited to they still absolutely were. those moments of celebration. Yeah. You know what, and so were the parents, very, very appreciative of 
the efforts that they saw that we put in not only to the third term and becoming virtual, but also the effort that we put into the two-part ceremony. Awesome. So tell me about how things are going, moving forward. You know, we're just a few weeks into the new school year, the 2020-2021 school year. Have you had to make some further adjustments? Um, you know, because we started the virtual platform in March, the only thing we had to do was tighten up on our delivery just a little bit more and make it even more professional for the first term. Now, here's the twist. At Freeport Gospel, we actually have the best of both worlds. The reality of what's going on in the community is there are some households that can do virtual and there are some households that can only do face to face, you know, and so we have both options. We have the option of the virtual learning 100 percent. And we also have the option of face to face 100 percent. Parents have the power to choose what it is that they want and the teachers of course, being so excellent at customer service, go ahead and deliver that blended approach. Wow, that is really, really commendable, Principal Knowles. Yeah, and so, so if, you, if, you walk, if you walk into some of our classrooms, you will see um, some of the teachers uh, with the computers in the front of them doing the live instruction with those students that are virtual as well as the students that are seated in the classroom. Wow, that is so nice. So what you're telling me is that if I'm in the fourth grade, I can be learning at home, and I can also have that interaction with my classmates who have opted to learn in person. Absolutely. And so what happens is we have teachers that were those that are teaching the virtual platform still because um, the, their class is not full face-to-face, -face, depending on the demographics of their room. They are live streaming. And so the live instruction, we do have the paid version of Zoom. And so they are able to log on at 8.30 with the child. The child can see their classmates. The classmates can see the virtual students. And we can all, they can all communicate with each other. And so in the same fashion, a teacher is teaching and asks a question to the students. The same way in traditional learning, a student can raise their hand and answer the question. It's the same way the students online can raise their hand. The teacher and their classmates can see them with their hand raised, unmute their mics, and answer the question. And so they are just as involved with the lesson as those seated in the room. And it, the only difference is, instead of you being seated in the classroom behind your desk, you're seated at home behind a desk in a quiet area receiving your instruction. But they follow the same curriculum, they follow the same um, schedule during the course of the day. Even with our specialty subjects, they still have all of the specialty subjects. What the specialist teachers would do is they would come to the, class, the homeroom teacher's classroom and they would log into the homeroom teacher's virtual session and they would teach the same way. And so our children, whether you are virtual or face-to-face, -face, you receive the same quality and level of instruction. I really love that you are providing that alternative to parents because you have some parents who would prefer or their minds would be more at ease with their children being in a more controlled environment, learning at home. You know, we have some children who are more susceptible to sicknesses and they are still able to engage in that full quality of education. So Absolutely. well done. Thank you. Decision, Thank you. Principal team. For those persons who have opted for their children to come onto campus, and of course, 
for the rest of the school family, your administrators, your teachers, and support staff, what measures have been put into place to ensure their safety during this time? Well, it's the same protocols within the community. No mask, no entry. So you will come onto our campus and you will see that the students are wearing face masks and shields, okay? We have sanitizing stations at each point of entry. We have a signage around the school so that the students can know exactly. Cough and sneeze in your elbow, please. Um, wash your hands uh, with soap and water for 20 seconds, which is the same as singing the happy birthday song. But most importantly, we do have our own electromagnetic static sprayer. I hope I said that correct. That's impressive. But yeah, so you know, if there is a COVID outbreak in any local business, what has to happen is a deep cleaning. Okay, and so the people that are, you know, licensed and know how to handle the machine, they will go in there, they will get the fogger, they would um, spray deep clean to sanitize, fog the area. You have to stay out of it for about 24 hours and then everybody can come back to work. Well, we've decided to take a proactive approach. And so our board, and I must give it up for them, our board decided to purchase us our own machine. And so we have our own fogging machine, our own a sprayer. And so we actually deep clean our school twice a week. Every Monday and every Thursday, we have our electromagnetic static sprayer and every classroom and the playground area and the bathroom and every place gets deep cleaned twice a week. You know, I think like a mom, especially a mom with an asthmatic child, all right? And so you wanna make sure some parents, they have to send their children to school because maybe they're an essential worker, they're the only parent and they have no option. But you wanna know that your child is safe. And so, hey, we pulled out all the stops. We pulled out all the stops up here and we have the deep cleaning going on twice a week. So, so far, so good. Wonderful. Yeah. I would definitely be comfortable sending my child in that environment. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so we know that you have your virtual learning going on. You have your in-face instruction as well. But I want to find out a bit more of how STEM is integrated into your curriculum at the school. So let's start with science. How is science highlighted at Freeport Gospel Chapel School? Well, you know that Freeport Gospel Chapel School is an eco-friendly school and we do carry a green flag. And so with that said, we do have such things as gardening. So we have our own garden. Okay. Now, Hurricane Dorian just came and did its own thing and then COVID came. But thank thankfully, we now, again, two chairs to the board, we have our seedlings. And we're going to get, you know, the garden back up and running. And that serves more uh, like an after school activity club where the students and staff that are a part of the eco club will go out and get the garden back. As well as we have the water bottle recycling that we do up here. And so that there um, involves everybody and not just the club. That was the club's way of getting the parent community and the teaching community involved with their club. And so we also do the recycling. And so that is the science apart from the traditional experiments and projects that we have going on. That's a part of the curriculum. Wonderful. So next we have technology. What is the computer program like at the school? How early? Are children exposed to technology? I know the school has a nursery going all the way up to sixth grade. So can you tell yeah. us a bit about 
how technology exposure is integrated into your curriculum. All right, so our kids are actually exposed to technology from K3. We start from three years old and we go to the sixth grade. So in the third grade, they do go to computer class. And in the computer class, they would learn the different parts of the computer and their function. All right. In K5, they would learn certain topics like hardware and software. The hardware is what you can see and touch. The software is what you can see and not touch. And so if you ask them in K5 about software, they will start to tell you Roblox. They will tell you YouTube. They will tell you Candy Crush and all of the little games that we play. They understand that that software. In grade three, we do things like input and output devices. You know, they know that the input devices are the devices used to put data into the computer and the output are the devices used to get the data out. Um, let's see, for grade two, we learn about the different forms of data, the letters, the numbers, the symbols. The fourth grade, we do storage devices. And they also save things to flash drives in the third and fourth grade. They also learn special keys and how to use the control keys between the fourth and the fifth grade. And so all of the functions of the mouse, instead of using the mouse, they would use, they would learn how to copy and paste and make things bold and underline using those shift keys and control keys. In grade five, they also set up emails. And so they have email addresses and they would turn assignments into their teacher via email. And they would learn to communicate with their teacher via that method. Um, in the sixth grade, we do do PowerPoint and Excel. And so with all of the virtual learning, now students have the ability, and this is what we do as a part of our curriculum, where students learn how to take um, the PowerPoint and create virtual presentations as opposed to just the traditional poster board uh, presentation where they create the animated slides and the voiceovers. And so that is how that is a little bit um, in a nutshell about what goes on in our technology department with our computer teacher and our students. Wonderful. Some of those things you mentioned, I did not learn some of those things until I was in high school. So it's good to know that they're starting earlier and earlier and earlier. Great stuff. Now, and you know, it, far, it just made it, made it so easy communicating with them. It made it easy communicating with them during the time off, especially our upper grades. Just that level of independence, it was already taught. And so it's like a hands-off approach with them. Right. And kids already love gadgets, right? So I'm sure once they can press a few buttons and, you know, type something out as opposed to just writing, 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 they would they would appreciate that much more. Great. And I'm sure getting back to some of the platforms that are being used. They are able to integrate lots of games and other exciting activities into um, the learning process, right? Kahoot and, yeah. and so forth. Great. Now, when it comes to yeah. engineering, we know that children are so creative, right? Their imagination is expansive. And so what opportunities are there for children to bring their own ideas to light, you know, because that's really what engineering is, conceptualizing a thing and then, hey, I brought my idea from a dream into now reality. Are there any opportunities for children when it comes to exploring that creative side? Right, and so, Apart from the regular classroom project based style of learning, you know, and I'm still, I still have my fingers crossed that we can begin to have the mousetrap and the robotics competition 
going on again. You know, the COVID and the social distancing and all of the other stuff that goes along with it, that has kind of halted that part of it to a certain extent. And so everything is just the project-based learning that's done in-house. But I have my fingers crossed, you know, that, you know, the mousetrap and the robotics and the travel and that sort of stuff would hopefully soon resume so that we can continue to grow even in that area. Wonderful. Now yeah. I have to admit here that I actually attended Free Park Gospel Chapel School from nursery all the way up to grade six, actually serving as the first hand girl of the school. So I'm even wearing my green. Yes, yes. Okay. Hello. As a nod to that. And so I'm absolutely taking much delight in this conversation we're having right now. As far as arts yes. go, I can really no. recall us getting up on the stage, even in um, Port Lacaya Marketplace or other venues and singing to our heart's content. And I see that that legacy has definitely continued. So can you tell us more about your art program, whether it be the performing arts, visual arts, what's going on now at the school? Are you guys still competing at National Arts Festival? Listen, you know that Bradley Thompson has earned his right to passage, okay? And he has pride and right. <laughs> and so for the last um, National Arts Festival, um, we actually came first place in the primary grades one through three uh, school choir, and that was in the entire Bahamas. And in the grades four through six, we came first in grade second in the entire Bahamas. Uh, liturgical dancing, our school actually placed first in the entire Bahamas. And this is all with the National Arts Festival. And so, yes, we are very much alive, waiting for another, and just, you know, hoping to reclaim this title, these titles, of all of these first place. <laughs> awesome. Go Mighty Mighty Eagles. <laughs> yes. And so our <laughs> last category of theme is math. How are you finding innovative ways to keep students engaged in math? And so we have a competition at our school and it's called Eagle Jeopardy. And so with Eagle Jeopardy, it's actually like a in-house general knowledge competition. And so it includes the math. It includes those brain busters, those problem solving and critical thinking questions. And we also have mental math uh, for the first 10 minutes of every lesson that's actually built in to our curriculum. And so, you know, the A. Becker curriculum is very, very strong and very, very strict. And it, it provides for that with the way that it's built. But the Eagle Jeopardy just enhances that. And we actually get to include STEAM within that Eagle Jeopardy competition. It's like a house competition, and we do it before we go into the track in the field just to garner uh, that team spirit and that camaraderie and that fire that is needed before we hit the track. And so that's where the academics and the brains and those that are strong in the STEAM areas get to showcase what they can do in, in gaining points for their house as we move into the athletic. Great. I hope that Peter House is still leading the way. <laughs> that was my help. <laughs> so well, we'll be back the children, after the this very are. short message.
much for all of that wonderful and valuable information about the great things that are happening at Freeport Gospel Chapel School. Now, Principal Knowles, I cannot let you come on the show without blowing off some steam, okay? So here it is. I am going to actually put you in the hot spot. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I am going to okay. ask you a question in each one of the categories, science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. Okay, so are you ready? No, I am not. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so ready or not? Mama here we Eagle, go. Here we go. <laughs> So, in the category of science, are you a lover of science at all? Yeah, but it has okay. to be like an experiment. Mm -hmm. Hands on. Yeah. Awesome. I hope you haven't blown up any labs in the past, eh? <laughs> no, I have not. But you know, the, 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 um, Lessons that I had in school that involved lab work are the ones that I remember the most. Yes. Yeah. That's definitely key to education, right? Absolutely. It's not just what you hear and mm -hmm. what you see, but you have to do. Yes. You know, and that's what STEAM is all about. Yes. Great. What about technology? What is your go-to tech gadget? My go-to tech gadget, I'll say it's probably my phone. Um, because I can do so much with it. Like I can talk on it as well as I can play my games. I can watch a video. Um, I can do a zoom. Um, and so it, it, it allows me that opportunity to kind of multi-talk. So my Are phone. You Apple or Android? Oh, I'm Android Nation, baby. <laughs> Android. Samsung. Yeah. <laughs> I know those Apple lovers would say, no way. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> awesome. Now, earlier you talked about, you know, the mouse trap and robotics, that type of thing. Do you have any project that you can remember where you actually planned out something and built it or created something no um not really i know there was once upon a time i had to help my son he loves the robotics thing and i was able to help with that and then i learned how to drive the car around the tires and that's that's yeah that's the most for me <laughs> Yeah. Okay. What about the arts? What is your oh uh, the arts? Yeah, with the arts, are you a performing arts art. person, a visual arts yeah. person? Yes. Performing. That that is that is. If you asked me what I wanted to be as a little girl growing up, I would just tell you a singer. I just want to to worship. I just want to sing. I just want to come on the stage and handle the mic. I'm a singer. I'm a worshiper, and I've been leading worship from long. And so I'm a I'm a performing arts person. And so that takes me to a different place. It takes me to a different world. It just it, that's my therapy. So that definitely the arts. Definitely. Wonderful. And math. Finally, math. What is your relationship with numbers? Are you one of those number crunching persons or, you know, find somebody else to deal with all of that? No, I do numbers. I, I, I do numbers very well. I've always been strong in math. And so even with at work, having to look at accounting information and financial information and reading those things, it's, it's kind of easy for me because I'm a numbers person. Now, if I start seeing too many words, oh, but numbers, easy. 
<laughs> my I had a granddaddy. He would say, I, I I may not be the best at reading, but you cannot rob me out of one cent because I can count. <laughs> and I and I think we got we got that that physics and math kind of <laughs> whiz about us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all about knowing, you know, math allows you to be accountable, really. You know, yeah. and as mm -hmm. educators, it's always a good thing when we can encourage our students to realize the value in math. You know, because you have some students who, once they hear the word math, they get flustered by the numbers and they want absolutely nothing to do with it. But of course, we know that math ties into what we do on a daily, daily basis. Every day. Yes, it does. Wonderful. Okay, so do you have any final words for us as we wrap up? Well, I just want to let everybody know that Freeport Gospel Chapel School is here for the last 42 years. And with God's help, as we are God's little workshop, we do plan to stay. And so registration is always ongoing as long as we have the space to accommodate some grade levels are full to maximum capacity. But we do have space in other grade levels. So come on down, check us out, have your son or your daughter or your little darling tested, and we invite them to be a part of our community. You can find us on Facebook as Freeport Gospel Chapel School. You can communicate with us through there. Our number is 374 FGCS for Freeport Gospel Chapel School. That's 3427. And we would love to hear from you, chit chat with you. And hey, turn your little darling into a little eagle. Wonderful. Great. So finally, any words of advice for parents who have opted to have their children learning virtually? How are they best able to support them in that environment? I will say this. My son, I have a son and a grandson, but that's another show <laughs> all right my son plays golf and so does my grandson my son has been playing for about five or six years now okay and my grandson played on the weekend in a tournament his first tournament he didn't win he didn't win any of the trophies and so he was just completely devastated so i said to my son to listen you know he, the other one is not handling this defeat so well could you kind of just go ahead and encourage him so my son turns around and my son bear in mind is only 12. he says to him look you're not gonna win every game, all right? What you do is you take the loss as a lesson. See how you can improve upon your skill and get better at it so that the next time you have another game, you can be more prepared and you can actually win a trophy. So I wanna say this to the parents. As your child is on the virtual platform, it's okay for you to move away from the room and allow them to answer the questions themselves. They may not always get it right, but the teacher uses that as an opportunity to assist them and drive the instruction. There are still parents in the background that are giving the answers <laughs> and that are whispering. And the teacher is like, I can see you, mom. I can hear you, mom. There's a test going on. Do you mind coming out of the room? I know you're on the side of the kid. I see them looking over and you're trying to give them the answer. And so, you know, allow allow them to fail because then the teacher she's not going to teach is not going to keep the grade but what the teacher is going to use is that data to drive better instruction so that they can see well where did little johnny or little susie go wrong i can tweak it and so the next time we do this testing they can get a much better grade and i can keep that one so what i want is for parents to know on the virtual community there's no need to panic there's no need to spoon feed because Here's the harsh reality that actually retards the growth and development of your child. And so that, that for me is just the biggest strain on the teachers yeah. that have to do virtual instruction. The parents just need to move away and let the child be child. Okay, so that you hear that, let those little eagles fly. Let them fly. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The, right. the teachers are like, Ms. can we let this child come to school? I'm like, why is it because the parent is in the background and I can't teach? I say, okay. 
Great. So that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And be sure to follow RBN TV Studios on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Be sure to click the subscription button so you're sure not to miss any episodes of Full Steam Ahead or other shows in the RBN TV Studios Network. No matter what the environment, there is always something new to learn. Technology has put us in a great position to learn anything, anytime, anywhere. So embrace the new classroom as you move full steam ahead. Bye-bye. You're watching RBN TV. We are networking, promoting, we're scoring points for you, proclaiming, declaring, and to encourage you. No matter the problem, we will enlighten you. We hear you, please listen, there is a point of view. Bye.